All right, welcome back to more black bass. Let's get some more fish. I'll show off a few more areas, and then. Come on. All right, let's see. As I was saying before, <clears throat> each area, like the lily pads, the weeds, the reeds, the trees, whatever, has four areas that you can fish. And the four areas, as I was saying earlier, is uh, from light to heavy from light to light, from heavy to light, and then heavy and heavy. Those are the only four areas. So basically I could pull into the lily pads here and end up fishing in, in one of the same action screens, I guess, so to speak, as these lily pads over here. So it really doesn't matter which lily pads you go into. You can kind of watch your radar down in the bottom left hand uh, you know, watch your map on the bottom left hand corner of the screen kind of you know as your boat moves that will move you to a to potentially a different uh, area so you know, here's more lily pads and again and I'm not gonna fish the lily pads right now I fished there a little bit earlier uh, I want to show off the I don't know if I showed off the weeds let's show off the weeds a little bit I'm sure that the bass are here. Okay, I guess we have already fished here. I couldn't remember. Alright, so we're... Let's see, this is light. Right here. And then we'll get into... Yeah, this is heavy right here. So we're in light heavy. And that... That... I can't tell. That kind of looks like a bass. That's a walleye. Uh, that's a... There's a bass. Let's see. Yeah, that's a bass. Let's catch a fish. Let's go for. Let's go for this one. No, let's go for this one. All right. Hold, hold down and right. Turn your line a little bit. Spinner bait is just fine right here for the weeds. Use a spinner bait, a jig of pork, I think a worm would work just just as well. But you you just want a weedless lure. Now you can't snag again, so it doesn't really matter, but but uh, certain lures just work better in certain places, so alright, let's try again. like that fish in the body. So, let's mark this one. Maybe he'll buy it. Yep, Sunday. Got my yard mode. Looking good. My wife went to Costco. So, I thought, why not? Let's film a video. We don't want to catch him. I'll I'll show off those other fish later on. I'm not going to do it right now. For now, I want to go over some other stuff. All right, let's let's head for the reeds. I know we haven't fished there yet. These are the reeds right here. Let's try it right here. John says bass like to feed in the reeds. The bass must be hiding here. Look out for hazards when you cast. And you can break a lure. I forgot about that. If you if you hit a lure too hard against something like a reed or some other type of solid object, not necessarily a lily pad or a weed, but uh, I I think even against the bank, you might you, you have the it could potentially break the lure. And if you break it, then we lose it. So that means we would lose our natural colored spinnerbait. We'd still have the bright one, but we just wouldn't have the natural. Yep, yeah, and there you go. There's a good example right there. <laughs> oh no, the hook was broken. You have to fix it right now. 
you cracked your lure on that cast. Check the casting area. Put the mark before you cast. Okay. Yeah, we can't fix it. We just... See, we lose it. So. Oh well, no big deal. This is why I don't really, really like to fish in the reeds unless I absolutely have to. Because you do have that potential hazard of breaking a lure. You don't want to break too many. There's only a few different lures that work really good in each area, so... Well, hang on to them. Make sure you got them. Alright, this is probably a small fish because he went from he went from yellow to red pretty quickly. Um, let's see. They'll kinda get stuck, but eventually if you keep keep kinda pulling back, eventually you'll get them through. I can't necessarily get permanently stuck behind the reed. Come on. Come on. sakes. I'm going to burn myself out. I'm already starting to lose power. There we go. Come on. There you go. All that for a fish that's probably going to be too small to keep. Maybe not. Let's see if he'll buy it. He may not buy it since we've already caught a fish here. Right, we can try. This is considered open water. Back up a little bit. Okay, if you look down at the bottom right, um, there's the uh, the bottom of the lake is uh, the uh, radar or the the sonar or whatever it is is picking up something down there. So this could be a place where we can catch a fish because it's also picking just anything that's not f just completely flat. You know, you can kind of see some some weeds or some trees or something down there. Then you can try this place out. All right, John said the finder is showing something. Cast over the gravel bottom. Okay, so this is a gravel bottom area, and as you can see, this is different from just getting out right in the middle of the lake and just you know, casting into an area that's just all open. Uh, you'll very rarely ever catch a fish in one of those areas. 
Uh, Alright, so we got a fish. So let's see what we can make here. Well, you know what? Alright, we'll try the spinner bait. It may not work. We may need to go. I should have showed, showed off the tackle box just to see what John would say. But I think a spinner bait might work. Yeah, we got him. Alright, another small mouth, and he's too small. Oh well. Alright, let's see what John would say. Fast feed around the gravel areas. Use a crankbait or a jig and fork. Okay. Well, let's let's try a crankbait. It's one of my favorites in the in the game, is a crankbait. It's a topwater lure, but it has a lip on it, which means when you reel it'll dive. Let's look over here. Alright, that's a walleye. There's a bass. Let's give it a try. If it looks like he's not going to bite. I'm not going to waste very much time here, though. Because, again, the best you're going to be able to do is maybe catch two fish at, a certain, at any given area. We don't want the walleye. Not yet. We'll show that off later. Looks like he's not going to bite. But anyway, this is just another area to show off. The open water is not necessarily bad in this game. Yeah, you know, the, the, easy, the easily identified areas are, you know, the weeds, reeds, lily pads, things like that. But there are good open water areas. And there is a lake coming up, not the next one, but the one afterwards, that we are going to need to find some good open water to fish in. Because if you don't, then there's just not much else to choose from. Alright, this is the best spot on hot days. Not that I think that really matters all that much, but... Alright, so there's a bass. And there's something goofy. Either a crappie or a bluegill. One of the two. I'll show off whatever it is later on. There it is. Come get it. Gotcha. Now, a fish can break your line, which I talked about earlier, and in rare cases, they can even break your rod. Yeah, I got a big large one. All right, 5.6 pounds. That's great. Good. Catch more like this. All right, good deal. Good deal. We got a big one. Those are the kind of, that's the size that we're going to want right there, either large mouth or small mouth, one of the two. But yeah, as I was saying, in rare cases, a fish can even break your rod. And also, you want to be careful with your boat, because ramming your boat into either a rock or the side of the bank too hard and too, or too many times can even damage your boat. And if you damage your boat, then that's it. You've got to hit back. You immediately weigh in with whatever you have. It doesn't matter. So let's go. All right, we've showed off the weeds, showed off the reeds. See, I'm passing over some gravel bottom areas. Um, let's see. Let's try this right here. This is 
It says the lunkers like the deep water weeds. All right, so there must be some weeds at the bottom. So this is another open water area that you can fish at. There's one. Yeah, we got two bass here. So let's catch one of them. Two bass and two walleye. Okay. Let's try a jigging fork this time. A oh, spinnerbait. Yeah, okay. Let's a jigging fork would probably work too, but let's try a worm. caught him because he hadn't got much stamina. He's probably a little guy. Yep, a little bitty. Two pounds, ain't gonna cut it. Alright, let's see if we can catch this one over here. He's going back. Nope, he's going back. Okay. I have caught two two bass in one area before, so it's not impossible. It's just kind of... The game probably calculates some kind of probability. Uh, Alright. I'm not going to bother going up in there. That looks like trouble. Alright, while well, I'm thinking of it, let's run over here. To our little area where we could potentially catch a bigger fish. Since it's been 30 minutes, probably been an hour. It's a good idea to check this place pretty frequently. Alright, are we on it? Looks like we are. Alright, come on, game, be good to me. Got a little one. Oh well. All right, we'll come back. All right, while I'm here in this area, I can also fish. There's. What the heck is my phone doing? All right, let's try the buoys. The buoys is kind of a kind of a. It's not as good. It's just kind of a place to fish. There's not... There's... Occasionally you'll actually find northern pike here. Northern pike kind of like to hang around the booties. Is what I've just noticed in this game. You can't cast... See, there's probably not much here. There's a little something or other. There's the buoys. Of course, you can't cast that far. We've got a bass here. Matter of fact, we got two of them. Okay, a worm would probably work. Let's see what John says. If the bass are suspended, use a minnow. In deep water, use a crankbait. All right, well, let's give. I like the crankbait, so let's let's give the crankbait a, a shot. Catch us a fish here. Come get it. fish gets off of your lure, then basically the action sequence is just over. You don't get to keep moving it through the water or whatever. You don't lose your lure, and you don't get to keep moving it. You just, you just have to recast, either that or move. But them just coming off of the lure is different from, say, them actually breaking the line. 
All right, we caught one. He's barely big enough to keep. So we have total weight of 22 pounds. We gotta catch some bigger fish. We gotta get on it. Let's see if this other one will buy it. Like he's going to. He's pretty much stopped. He's spooked. Yep. Nope. All right. All right. Let me show this off. Head back to the marina. Don't pull in all the way, just kind of pull it about this far. And the marina! The bass like hiding under the bridge. That's where the bass like to feed. Look out, don't snag your line. Alrighty. So let's check this area out. There's the marina. We don't want to cast all the way up there. We just want to cast short. That is if... Yep, there's no bass here. There's just these two and a walleye. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and show this off then. Let's see what these are. I, I think they're bluegill. But I don't know for sure. Let's catch one and we'll find out. Then we'll catch a walleye. Now these little guys get bigger as you in the not the next lake, but the but the, the last two lakes that you can fish at. They actually get big enough to where you can even catch one and break the unofficial record. But these little guys are not going to get you there. So we caught a crappie. Okay, so I was wrong. It's not a bluegill, it's a crappie. It's good practice for hooking bass. Yep, we don't get to keep it. So, there's a crappie. So, let's catch, if we can catch, if we can grab him, let's catch this walleye here. Ah, I did it. I just had a feeling. Oh well. I don't want to waste another crankbait, so let's just use a minnow. Now, in real life, you're very rarely ever going to catch a walleye or a crappie or a bluegill or probably a northern pike and definitely not a, well, very rarely on a catfish on a plug, on, basic, on, on a bass lure. Bass lures are basically for bass only. Uh, your strategy on, and in real life, your strategy on catching these kind of fish you're probably not going to want to use any kind of a lure. <laughs> now there are, they do make certain type of lures that emulate the types of things that a walleye would look for in the water. They actually do make a, a minnow type lure that has a hook, that has a lip on it, but it's for trolling, which is a, which is different from just plugging. Trolling is more or less whenever you have a trolling motor and you just kind of cruise along and go real slow and kind of more or less emulate just a tiny fish swimming through the water at a certain speed. Uh, but it's a, yeah, it's a specially designed lip to where it doesn't go too deep and it's designed to make certain movements in the water. And that's different from what I have right now from, from this minnow. Let's see if we can catch this guy. Alright, we got it. He 
that'd be pretty big. We might have trouble getting him in. We we'll get him. Probably not too big. Now, let's see. Eh, he's not bad. 7.6 pounds. So that's a walleye. Walleye, to me, are that is the fish that is near and dear to my heart. And that's when I was, ever since I was a kid, whenever I was growing up, my dad and I would always, we would always fish for walleye. There's a real, there's some really good walleye lakes in Mexico, and that's basically just where we would go whenever we wanted to fish. We'd go to, there's some real good walleye lakes. Uh, Conscious Lake and Ute Lake are a couple of really good walleye lakes. And I do have a nine pound walleye mounted on my wall, so those are the kind of fish that are, that I just basically grew up catching. And we did troll for walleye. Trolling is just one of those things that you have to master the art of it. But once you get good at it, you can you can go to a good walleye lake and you can do awesome. Alright, so there's a walleye, so we don't want to catch him. Okay. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to cut the video. And I'm going to go around and catch some more fish. And if I run across a northern pike, I'll show that off. Uh, any other kind of fish. I don't think there's any other kind of fish you can catch here. There may be. Um, but And I do want to show off this area catching a bigger fish because I do want, you know, I, if you're playing along, I want you to be mindful of this particular area right here. It's the only area in this lake that I've noticed that that you can catch a fish any bigger than, say, six pounds. So I'm going to cut the video and I'm going to off screen everything and we might just pick it up whenever we get ready to weigh in. So, appreciate everybody watching, and stay tuned for another another episode of Black Bass. Later.